This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, it is the finale, the conclusion of Jank Week. And this is a deck affectionately known as Saltai Burn, because it burns the opponent out with a combination of Galloping Lizrog, here, we'll put that there, the Ozolith, and Ram Through. Ram Through deals damage to target creature. You, um, Let me just read the card. I can't even summarize well, but this looks like a, the art is, it looks like it's trying to cuddle him in just a weird location. Anyway. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. If the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to the creature's controller instead. In a way, it's like a fling in green, because when you combine it with Galloping Lizrog, which gets, when it enters the battlefield, you may remove any number of plus one, plus one counters from creatures you control. If you do, put twice that many counters on the Lizrog. Doubles your counters. With the Ozolith, removing the counters with the Lizrog, if it causes the creature to die, it puts the counters on the Ozolith, and then you can move the counters from the Ozolith to the Lizrog. Don't be surprised if you see a Galloping Lizrog with over 50 power and toughness. And of course, this Frog Lizard has Trample. So when you combine it with Ram Through, as long as the opponent has a creature you can target, you do the damage directly to face. Oh yeah, and that is how you call it Sultai Burn. The rest of the deck is trying to make it happen. There's some really neat combinations of things you can pull off with this little group of cards in particular. Nightmare Shepherd, uh, whenever a creature dies, you can exile it, create a token that's a copy. So Yorvo and Pelucranos, they legend rule themselves. When they legend rule themselves, you can exile them to make a copy that then legend rules the one that entered the battlefield. Each time that you do that, it creates plus one, plus one counters. So six if you control the just the Pelucano, seven if you control a Henge. Each time the thing dies, those counters can go on the Ozolith. So it's another insane way to generate a bunch of counters with these legendary green creatures. So Henge, of course, with large creatures, makes a lot of sense with plus one, plus one counters makes sense. Helps us draw what we need to draw. Hydroid Crasis helps us get through the deck, draw what we need to draw, and combos very well with Ram Through, the Ozolith, the Great Henge, all of those things. Paradise Druid is probably the important card in the deck because otherwise we do nothing for two or three turns and we're too far behind to do anything efficient. So keep hands with Paradise Druid. One Grazer, if you draw multiples of this card, it's pretty bad. It doesn't synergize with our deck in many ways other than that we do need a lot of land to make things happen. And speaking of a lot of land, I'm running 28 again. I keep doing this. I keep doing this. I get so sick of getting stuck on two lands with my 26 land and 27 land decks. I just, I can't do it. So the last, the final straw, I had three games in a row where I didn't make my fourth land drop. Three in a row. And the final straw was I cut two more cards from the deck. They were a Nightmare Shepherd and an Ozolith. And I added Castle Lockthwains, two of them. So every time you see the castle, it could have been something different. But the idea is that castle can draw cards anyway to try to get you to the different cards. So we'll see how this goes. Besides, the triomes can be cycled. We probably won't flood out as much as we'll need those land drops. All right, I've introduced the deck. Thank you very much for everybody who made Jank Week happen. The Patreon numbers have been amazing, so thank you so much. If you want to say in my Jank Weeks, Join the Patreon, check out the tiers, Covert Go Blue, patreon.com slash Covert Go Blue, link in description. And just another thank you to all of you who signed up for that. It's amazing. And a reminder that the next Jank Week is at 69,000 subs, not that far away. So remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the show. Let's dive in, let the nonsense begin. Well, it's got land. It doesn't have ramp, but we're on the play, so it might be okay. We're going to want to draw something. It, this hand is particularly egregious because it can't cast a Yorvo, so drawing a Yorvo would be painful. But it looks like it's working out so far. Hmm. 
Blue, white, do nothing. What else you got? Nothing. What holds priority quite like that? Just guy to fairy. How exciting. Ozolith arrives. So we'll want to have that down before we play something into the Teferi. If we play this, they might just bounce the Ozolith. I guess that's fine. Alright, they do bounce the Ozolith. All basic land Jeskai. Kind of funky. Here's my Ocelot. Okay, here's my Polychronos. If they remove it, counters on the Ocelot. And they do nothing. What a strange game we have so far. I was wondering if they run non-basic lands. They have Fabled Passage. Double red. Time wipe the Polychronos. Counters on the Ozolith. Feels good. The Teferi can reset the Ozolith coming up here, so it's very scary. Let's just play you. Yay, land. And then we'll go fetch. What do we fetch? Grab a green, play a grazer. Put the counters on the grazer. Hi. There's a good reason. Good reason to put counters on the grazer. It's nice. Wow. All right. Can the opponent deal with the Ozolith here? Gets all the counters back. Outlaws Merriment. Okay. Okay, gamer. I see what you're up to. Well, I can move the counters here and hit the opponent really hard, or I can do the nice thing again. I think we just want to play another big crisis. Actually, let's go for four. Play the Grazer to get the other land on the field to ramp even harder. Like so. Our opponent has something for one blue. It's interesting. Hmm. If it's an unsummon... It can't target this in response. Like, I get to choose whether or not to take the action. And if they unsummon the Krasis, we're pretty happy. Maybe they're just slow rolling an opt. Or not. One damage to any target. Which of these would you like to target? Outlaws Merriment. Let's see you get out of this one. It's a classic showdown here between Outlaws Merriment and the Ozolith. Oh! Look at this. Ozolith gets stocked with tokens, 13 now to be exact. And we have ram through, but our opponent doesn't have a creature, but they have Outlaw's Merriment. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. If the creature you control has trample, excess damage to the opponent. Well then, well, well, well. So this is five, five, five point crisis, and the opponent is going to create a creature with their outlaws merriment. So we can target that creature with ram through, potentially for lethal. It is always nice to draw all four hydrate crisis when you have a lot of land. Um, uh, guys. So I know I hit the wrong button, but man, that was just a. Awkward mouse moment. Awkward mouse slip right there. 
could have we could go for lethal right here. No! Alright. I mean you must play Agent of Treachery, right? So we have to not let that happen. Ah, oh, they could have been dead. They actually could have been dead. They're still going to be dead. So the one mana card that was holding priority was the Spectral Sailor. And the plan is to Luka that into whatever the heck they're going to Luka it into. I wonder if it's Agent of Treachery. And if I forget to decline this time, extra rip, but that should be game. Yay, on the play with Ozolith. Of course we have double henge to make sure it's awkward, but I will still give it a try. We just need to draw a large creature, and I think things will be fine. I think we go fetch on turn one. If we fetch a blue and the next turn shock and play druid, we'll have untapped land for a while. We'll be open to whatever the deck wants to give us off the top. Or not blue, right? We get green. Because then we can play Yorvo. We can make blue with Paradise Druid, and nothing in our deck requires more than one blue. Sacred Foundry tapped. Polychronos off the top. That can be pretty great. Mardu Triome. I like setting up the henge. Getting a henge down makes me feel all nice and happy, but the opponent's not having it. They came prepared. Yorvo. All right, we get the Ozolith. And we get the Yorvo. I wish we did have a turn one Ozolith when this died, but alas. Still think you gotta shoot your shot. Elspeth's Nightmare. Goodbye, Paradise Druid. Stone Rain. Brutal. Yep. And now we stick on three lands in our 28 land deck. And we would be stuck on two lands if I hadn't added two Castle Locked Wains. They were the last two lands I added. Another Outlaw's Merriment memer? Well, this time we're mana screwed. We might get memed. Exiling the graveyard with the last chapter of the nightmare. Some kind of a Mardu enchantment list. Going perfectly for the opponent right now. Elspeth Conku's death. At least we get some counters on our Ozolith, right? Alright. Do we draw land? We do. It's not quite over yet. So do I get blue mana? Or do I do I get green mana? We might not be able to play another Yorvo, but I think I want to play the Nightmare Shepherd. I think we just get the green mana. Alright, we have an 8 8. My opponent has nothing to get back yet with Elspeth Conquer's death, but they do have multiple copies, as they always do. And now the Merriment Beatdown gets extreme. Polychronos off the top. Put some more counters there. It's getting bigger and stronger. That's true. But I don't know if we're ever going to untap with a creature in this game. Our opponent's playing a very hateful deck. Towards creatures, specifically. Second Merriment. Okay. Fine. Birth. Hmm. If this creature sticks, Great Henge gets really exciting. Okay, the attacks continue. Stupid. Elspeth conquers death mana. 
All right, gain some life back. Hopefully the opponent misses on drawing ECDs for a minute. And the tokens are coming. We'll see if the opponent can close the deal. They have 10 damage. Okay, so they're running low on gas. Making a big Lizrog isn't quite it yet, is it? But I guess it does use my mana better, but then this can fight. That's pretty good, too. Uh-huh. They're doing a very good job of hitting the three ones. I'll give them that. All right, so we want this to die with a counter on it. If it's going to die anyway... And we fight first? Is that how it works? It's a weird card. Yeah, I probably should have blocked something first, actually. Little mistake. Yep. Yeah, stupid game. I hate being mana screwed. I really do. There's nothing that makes me angrier. Clown by Outlaw's Merriment, though. I'm sure some of you really wanted to see that. All right. We do have a Yorvo on the play, so I think I can hang on to this hand. Whereas normally I'd mulligan that on the draw as being too slow. Got to make sure that we play all the green sources. Our opponent has the card we want most in the world. Until now. Now it's too late. Thank you. <laughs> Let's start playing the monsters. We'll give them the monster plan. See how they handle it. First our own games. Well, that's a pile of value for our opponent for sure. They get to put the counters on the druid, then draw a bunch of cards. Whenever you play... Whenever another green creature... I think we want the shepherd, but I don't think, I don't know, flying? I think flying makes makes us want the shepherd. Yep, just try to beat him down. Okay, they went to the 4-4. Four four. That's interesting. New Horizons. Okay, they're really going to the to beef this up. Complete with a fight spell? Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Going off. Can they do it better than that? Can anyone do it better than that? Drop a Hydra. Pump the Orvo. Keep hitting. Our opponent does fall to 10, so the monster's plan is giving them a hard time, but they are fully reloaded with Iroan Games. Pelt Collector. Archive Troll. Pumping the Pelt Collector. Thrashing Brontodon pumping the Pelt Collector. And there is an army of dorks on the ground. You want to rumble? The Lizrog. I think I can just make my creatures too big for the opponent to do anything about. This is double, right? I mean, they can't fight it. They're mono green. What can they do? What can they actually do? They say not to put all your eggs in one basket, kids, but sometimes CGB says all your eggs belong in that basket. Better hop to it. Get it? Because it's a frog up to it pretty funny pretty funny <laughs> so that is a gold token you can sacrifice it for mana of any color well are you do they have a way to kill me
They need a pump spell. Down to two. Not quite dead. Not quite dead. Hydra? I guess you can double that up. <laughs> Lizrog for the win. Yep, that hand is not functional. <laughs> All the enablers, none of the creatures. That's, that's enjoyable. It's good to see. All right, one of you can go away. I think that's how this is going to go. Obash. Our opponent reveals immediately that they are not into fun. And they're on the play, which makes beating them about... 20 to 30 percent less likely. I mean, I have a turn three Palucranos. It probably, it's probably not going to be enough, but we will see. We will see. I mean, there are tough choices here. Whisper Squad. Another Scorpion. Serrated Scorpion of the infinite frustrating damage. The unstoppable one, too. The unblockable, unstoppable Phoenix of Ash. I think we just smash that. Hope to get to untap and play the Great Henge. I don't see many other good options. Life gain from the Henge and the ability to fight with Pelucranos can keep Obosh from completely killing us. Mountain. I would like. How would you like to add to your tremendous advantage this turn? Well, they're going to completely think about it. Let's see what they come up with. Bastion. Now that's loss of life, right? Not damage. That's why it usually doesn't get played in these decks. Whenever a creature you control dies, loses one life, gains one life. So that's not doubled by Obosh. All right, so we shock here. Play the U. And let's get the Ozolith on the field. And say go with Ram through open and also with a fight from Palukranos open. It keeps Obosh from destroying us. Uh-huh. So, do we want to ram this through? All right. Interesting. How do we do it? I can block this if I want to. If I use the ram through, if I fight, these both die. I think I just need to do this. All right, down to seven. We have the Lizrog. Let's go get another black mana so we can do more fighting. We have the Ozolith, so we could take counters off the Pelucranos. But I don't think that's good if we need it to fight. Hmm. Let's leave some mana. Tap differently. So here's blue, green, one black. There we go. So we have a green open. I don't think I actually remove any. Ah, uh, we'll just remove one. We remove one counter, it doubles on here, so it makes it a much better threat. I think that's worth it. Then what? I think we have to start the clock for the opponent. So we attack them for four, and then we'll use this to fight the Phoenix. Only one card in Graveyard, so escaping the Phoenix isn't a big deal yet. The Dodgy Boy, okay. Of course, everybody. 
They didn't make Dodgy Boy unblockable, though. See if they pump the Phoenix. If they do, we'll use Pelucranos to fight. No pumps. Down to four. See if the opponent can pull this off. Okay. Cheese ball. I guess I should have fought the Phoenix. Then I would have been one life point higher. All right. It has a Paradise Druid, so it's the best hand we could possibly have. Immediately. But we do need an untapped land off the top to play this on three. So hold on to your butts. Our opponent has Garuda, and they led on a Plains. So that's funky. Untapped land. Hallelujah. They've got something. What is it? What could it be? Hmm. If it's Heartless Act, that's pretty funny because Polychronos is all counters, but they could have killed the Druid. Hmm. So what do we need? We have all the green we need, so we'll get another black. One blue is usually more than enough. Let's slam the Great Henge before they can do anything about it. Send in for six. It's waiting for them to do something. Exile target creature, then return it to the battlefield under owner's control. Nice. Very nice. I get a card. <laughs> I love cards. Um, one, two. Let's power out a Hydroid Crisis to draw even more. The next one will be even bigger. And the Henge engine is on. Brutal. So some kind of Super Gyruda control deck. Wonder what Gyruda is actually trying to hit. Maybe a Dream Trawler? Let's start with a Yorvo and then throw out a Palukranos and make the opponent deal. Since every creature draws a card, we're not missing much. And they scoop it up. Yeah, it has Paradise Druid. Just keep it. Just keep it. It's the only good card in the... It's, it's the only good card in the deck before turn, like, eight. Uh, the Honey Prince wants a hello. Here you go. Let's see what kind of nonsense you're up to and if it's any fun. All right, some scrying stuff happened. We have Paradise Druid, and then we have Palukranos, and then we have Great Hand, so things are moving. Things could happen here. Deputy of Detention. The Ozolith? No. You monster. Well, somebody brought their scumbag shirt today. <laughs> we'll see if we can fight that deputy. Fight for the Ozolith, my friends. Always fight for the Ozolith. They have mana open. They're going to counter the Great Henge. You can feel it coming in the air tonight. But we're going to try anyway. We have to try. It worked. It actually worked. All right, get him. Get him. I'm getting that Ozolith back. Just you wait. But no reason to give them a way to use their mana this turn, but it looks like it's just a brick turn. Nothing? Alright, we're fighting. What you got? I got it back. I got my Ozolith back, baby. Now we need a Nightmare Shepherd. Let's try this. See if we can draw to it. Not yet. I 
Attack with Palucranos. No, I, I... What is with my mouse? I keep missing what I want to click. That is a very chronically bad thing to do in a game like Magic the Gathering. All right, you lose a counter. I'm feeling like we just go for the other one to draw a card. Besides, we can get this one back if the graveyard gets nice and full. What is your escape cost? Six cards. Six is a lot, actually, but there's the shepherd. Ooh, I want this back now. <laughs> Oops. And the opponent's going to scry. They're going to try to finagle a way out of this. I'll throw the Pantheon. Must be a Thassa deck. And, yep, no combo opportunity for me. So this turn, I was adding up the mana, but it looks like we play Nightmare Shepherd and Lizrog, removing all the counters from the Polychronos, which puts them over here. And then we make a copy of the Polychronos because it went to the graveyard. And then it comes in with seven counters and we can put those counters on a Lizrog or something. It was going to be fun. It was going to be fun. Oof. It's been a tough one, guys. It's been a tough one for the Ozolith monsters. The draws either haven't been there or the opponents have just not been interested in seeing what you can do with this deck. How will I ever do it? This is why Jank Week is hard. This is why the, this is why we can't have Jank Week every day. <laughs> These are the reasons we can't have nice things. Uh, Ashiok Sleeves. Dumb cat. Definitely a control player. Br on the bright side, we have time. We have time to set up a little bit, and Hydroid Crisis can be good against them if it doesn't get taken out of our hand. Wait, what? Gates Knights? Now I'm just confused. Here's a Druid. Ashiok. All right. Let's see how this works out for you. All right. Well, that's a good draw. Let's see how the opponent deals with this. A creature that is on the battlefield, not in my library or hand. Night Veil Predator. Well, Death Touch won't help you much. This prevents the damage that gets dealt to it. I leave you with one last. Great Henge. I love how these cards go together. Love it when a good plan comes together, don't you? I think the opponent will block. I think they'll block. I think they're going to block. I don't think they know how this goes. Nom. Let's we'll let that sink in for a second. Now that you have experienced disappointment in your life, would you like to concede? <laughs> All right, we'll just play this tapped and hold up the fight mechanic for if the opponent for some reason attacks and pumps their knight, we'll cycle the triome. We'll see what we do next turn. Why not attack the Ashiok CGB? Because nobody cares. The opponent's not going to mill me. I'm going to hit them way too hard. There's no way that's happening. Alright, Knight of the Ebon. Sure. And nothing. Alright, let's do the cycle then. So probably play a Krasis. What we're trying to find is Nightmare Shepherd and... Uh, a copy of a legendary creature like two Yorvos. Wait a minute. We don't have enough. Yeah, we don't have enough counters right now for Lizrog Ram through to be lethal. So that's what we want to set up. Wow. 
classic. Grazer, Ozolith, Henge. What a weird mix of cards. I think I'm actually keeping it, though. All we have to do is draw a big creature. This hand is pretty good. It is mono red. They play mono red. Attack face till they're dead. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna have fun. This is gonna be great. They're not. They don't. They don't play OP stuff. I can't deal with at all. This Ozolith does so much. What a warrior. Yep, there's the Spitfire. Spitfire's pretty good. Grazer has to take another one for the team here. Well, at least we have a flyer. We've got a flyer, boys and girls. Oh my. Oh my god. So, actually, we're not going to block the way they think we are. The Shepherd is going to block the Initiate. The Grazer is going to bo block the Spitfire because we get to make another one. And we get to ramp. But the opponent does get another 1-1 one, one to make our life miserable. But we get the Henge. A little life gain to get us through these dark times. Okay, stuff is happening. They've only got three cavalcades. This is fine. This is totally fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> 10, 11, 12. And then one more. According to my math, we're at one. Not even close. I was way off. But that's why I don't math. So glad we played Magic today. Ozolith, Paradise Druid, seems awesome. But do we play a tap land on one? I think we have to. The way that this can curve out is Paradise Druid, Nightmare Shepherd, Pelucranos, and Ozolith. The same turn. Our opponent opened up on Temple of Enlightenment with a little bit of scry. Let's see what the blue-white mage has for us. Birth the Melitus. Another Nightmare Shepherd. Interesting. Well, here's the Nightmare Shepherd. Let's see if what the opponent has to say about it. Can they deal? Looks like they're going to try to counter what we do. Well, first things first, let's attack. See if they have a play they wish to make. Unsummon? Sure. Let's play it again. Resolves. Let's play Ozolith. Resolves. Unsummon. Interesting choice. Shatter the sky, we get to draw a card and keep our Paradise Druid. Take the action. I guess keep is the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Alright, Nightmare Shepherd returns. We'll make the opponent deal again. May as well attack, I don't think the opponent will target this. Another wall factory. Another birthday party. 
passage. So last time we tried to attack, the opponent bounced Nightmare Shepherd right away to save some life points. So let's try that again. I might need the mana for the Paradise Druid, so I'm going to hold back on that. All right. They seem very allergic to taking damage. Let's see if we can resolve Pelucranos and the Henge here. Having the Henge down makes a big difference. Luminous Brood Moth. Hello. That's a big fancy mothy thing. All right, Shepard to the battlefield. Things are gonna. Things will start moving now. One, two, three, four. Not in a hurry to kill the Brood Moth. I'm more about advancing my own battle plan. Oh, yeah. We get to untap from this position. Things are very interesting. We might actually get to do the thing. If we draw a Lizrog, we definitely do the thing. Oh, a token doesn't come back with Broodmoth because once a token leaves the battlefield, it's exiled regardless of anything else. That's why tokens, if you bounce them, they disappear. Same thing, Broodmoth can't get it back. Agent of Treachery. Stealing? Stealing what? Shepard's a good choice. It is a good choice. Alright, how do we recover? I guess we can do super crazy things with the Ozolith. And I do just want to get this back somehow or find another one. So let's start here. We play other Pelucranos. We keep the new Pelucranos. We lose the old Pelucranos. We put counters on the Ozolith. Suppose we can play you. All right, we draw Yorvo. So we want mana open to use our Pelucranos in case the opponent's trying to bounce or otherwise abuse their Aegean Treachery. We also have Ram through. We can get this to 11, but that's not big enough yet. So I think we just want to say go here. The opponent with an interesting setup with Nightmare, Luminous, and Agent. Fighting isn't going to do a lot of good. Killing this isn't any good. If we attack with this, though, it's a lot of damage. And we'll see. Maybe we can get it to enough. They're going to take 11? If we ram through, we can deal another 11. It's so close to lethal. So close. It feels like there should be a way. Plus, some of the damage does get absorbed by a creature, so it's not like the ram through just gets the job done. Teferi. Awkward. I think we let that be. If we ram, remember, if we ram through anything of the opponents right now, bad things happen. We'll just save the fight. If we ram through the agent, they get to steal something. If we ram through one of these, not much happens because they're redundant. Flicker of fate on the agent. Okay, so now we can fight it. But if we fight it, if we fight it, it just comes back. But if we don't fight it, Okay, well, I guess we make it come back with a flying counter, so they have to take the Pelucranos, so the next Pelucranos can kill it for good. Just another fun, casual Flicker the Agent deck. Ooh, they exiled it instead. Interesting. And they take the 11-11. Hmm. 
How am I going to get out of this? Lizrog would be a really good draw. Okay, that doesn't work because it's a token. Our opponent with a bit of an oops. Should never have exiled it to the Nightmare Shepherd for sure. Their whole deck seems to be all about flickering Agent of Treachery. Which, you know, says something about the person. <laughs> they go even harder on it than I do. Disgusting. <laughs> Alright. So we play this. Our opponent's completely tapped out, so we can get him here. So we keep you, moves five counters. We put the counters on the Pelucranos and we attack for lethal. We also have the ram through. It's completely unnecessary though. All right, I have to click carefully. Take action. Got him. Did I have fun this match? Ooh, tough questions when you faced Agent of Treachery. I feel like hitting the frowny face sends a message that we don't like Agent of Treachery, and hitting the smiley face says Agent is okay. I don't want to endorse the Agent, but I have to endorse the Ozolith. Hmm. Nope, too slow. As the Ozolith, as the Yorvo, I guess we keep it. The Nightmare Shepherd is also a key component, but right now we're not even close to casting it. So I'll put it away. Let's get the tap land out of the way. Racist is nice. Azalith! Away we go. I'm gonna looking like a counter spell gamer let's find out but if that resolves even if they kill it or bounce it with the fairy now there are counters on the ozolith fires of invention oh i hear that's a card outlaws merriment <laughs> <clears throat> the best thing ever done with the fires of invention, for sure. Yes, yes, of course. Let's get another black source. Play a Krasis. Baby Krasis. Just to make a giant Lizrog someday in the future. It also pumps the Yorvo. Let's get Assertive. Still so much merriment in the jank. In the jank queue. Very tempting to make a giant Lizrog when you have an Ozolith. Like, what are they gonna do? Okay. Here come the tokens. Oh. Oh. Will someone please play with me? I'll keep this hand. What the heck? It's slow, but this deck is slow. Maybe we'll rip a Paradise Druid off the top, like a proper, like a proper mage. It's tempting to fetch a blue, but we might draw Yorvo, so I'm going to try to slow roll the passage. Yorvo! Alright, we'll go get green, I guess, so that we have a play next turn. Feels pretty bad when you're in this spot and have to do that, but... We'll draw the blue. It'll be fine. It will be fine. Right now there's only one card. And we don't want to play it until later anyway. Really? It's hard to explain how annoyed I am with Healer's Hawk, because it's not like an OP card or anything. I just see so much of it every day. Just every single day is Healer Hawk, Healer Hawk games. 
Maybe that's part of the jank thing. When I play ranked, obviously this isn't a problem, but the problem with playing ranked is you play ranked, and what's more annoying, Healer's Hawk or, you know, every single freaking deck in ranked? Send the Yorvo. Opponent takes six, they're a life gain deck. They should be able to take six. So Pelucranos here because I can Great Henge next turn. Although I, yeah, it also grows the Yorvo. Not too worried about Nightmare Shepherd just yet. Leg Crafter, that's pretty good. Wish I had an Ozolith on the battlefield. So do I keep the Fight Machine or the Yorvo? I know that Pelucranos can come back, but it's not for a really long time. I'll keep the fight machine. We might need to kill a pride mate. Another land. Here's the henge. Here's the shepherd. There's the blue source. Hydroid Crasis looking spiffy. Opponent takes the hit. The Aerialist, of course. We need something to put massive amount of counters on with our life gain. Wow. You throw away your hawk so brutally. So cold. Why so cold? Oh my goodness. The Lizrog. Hmm. Alright, let's play the Hydroid Crasis. Still holding back the Ozolith right now. Yeah, because we need to draw some land, of, of course. So we don't want to block the Aerialist yet. Although I guess we could with the Shepherd. Just put out another Shepherd. Double Shepherd is a bit redundant. Me what? When it dies, return this card to the battlefield under your control. You want you want the zero zero. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. And then we have the attack of the hawk. Okay. Okay. Our opponent working on the mad lad distinction. Dub Shepherd. Another Lizrog. Okay. Azalith. I suppose we'll pay two life here to have the Pelucanos fight available. Who knows? We're trying to set up here. I feel like it's coming. We just have to draw the ram through, right? Our opponent is also a life gain deck. They might have a ton of life here. It feels like the face-off begins. So I could fight this. But I think I like saving. Saving this card. All right. For the nonsense we get to do with the Lizrog. Are you ready? All of the counters, please. Now, what if I just keep the counters on the Krasis? I could make the Krasis pretty huge with the Ozolith, right? Or I could throw all of it onto the Lizrog. I mean, it's a trample. All right. Oh, I for I don't get as many counters though because this lived. That's a mistake. All right. So extra card. 
fight with a 7-7, seven, seven, but I have a 32-32. We'll just say go. Yeah, I was supposed to kill this so that the counters go to the Ozolith. That was a mistake. Pride mate. All right, let's fight. None of that, please. Let's kill it while it's young. Kill it while it's a small pride mate. Yes, yes. Angel. Okay. Opponent facing down a 32-32 Galloping Lizrog. And getting aggressive with an aerialist. Yep. Um, if I exile it, I don't think they even get this at all. Ooh. My crisis. All right. Could just attack the opponent for a lot, but what fun is that? See how the opponent handles the Liz. Okay. Could fight one. And they're still not quite dead, so... And even so, it would just be exploiting trample knowledge. Let's let's try to get the darn combo here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a lot of land. Inspiring Commander. Whenever a creature with power two or less enters a battlefield, gain life, draw a card. Hype. All right. This thing wants to keep rumbling. So let me put counters on the Ozolith. Come on, draw the ram through. Draw the ram through. Draw the ram through. Let's go. Ram through one time. Let me do the thing. I want to do the thing. I want to do the thing. Well, this is kind of a thing that you can do with the legendaries. Pelucrino Senorvo, making new copies of them to power up your Ozolith even more. <laughs> All right, are we out of gas? Out of things we can do this turn. All right, let's send the mighty. One Lizrog to rule them all. Didn't want to take the Liz bump. Got it. And we are back for the post games wrap and unsurprisingly the deck is jank. <laughs> I, I feel like I, I'm always surprised by my comments. I get a lot of comments that are like, so if I craft this deck, is it good? Uh, maybe I make it look really fun and I definitely cut the games that are one-sided and not interesting to watch in any way most of the time. So I can see how you might get an impression. But if I say the word jank, it is not good. <laughs> It is not competitive. You have to enjoy the journey more than the victories because they're not easy to get. So just a reminder to all of you who watch Jank Week and just can't wait to craft that nonsense deck. It's nonsense that I do my best to make look good so that you guys enjoy the video as opposed to feeling depressed about magic or the meta because that's not what I'm here for. And I don't think that's what you're honestly here for either. I think we want to have fun. Besides, I go through the hours of footage collecting so you don't have to. All right, so this deck, would I make any changes? You can run 26 lands. I'm too paranoid. I felt like I had a really bad run of luck early where I got mana screwed every single game, so I went crazy, ran 28. But man, 28 lands and Hydroid Crisis do seem to fit together. This deck might benefit from Nissa who shakes the world, just as 
sort of having a strong resilient plan outside of Hydroid Crisis. And I'm not sure exactly what you would cut. You could scale back the legendaries, but it takes away the really cool engine that happens when you have a Nightmare Shepherd, a Great Henge, and the legendaries, and the Ozolith. So I don't really love cutting that. Besides, if you're adding Nyssa, you're trying to make the deck good. This is not supposed to be good. The epic Lizrogs were very, very fun. So yeah, thanks a lot for making Jank Week happen. And if you want to try something new in this deck, it's a nonsense deck. Do whatever you want. Season to taste. Play what you want to play. It's cool. All right, I have two Patreon shoutouts. If you want a shoutout in your video, you can join the $10 Mythic Uncommon, or is it Bomb Rare? I think it's the Mythic Uncommon. It is. It's the Mythic Uncommon tier on my Patreon, where you can get a shoutout in a video. Generally speaking, you want to frame your shoutouts in a way to make sure that the people receiving it will understand it, but there's a lot of inside jokes you may want to throw into these videos. So Patreon shoutout number one. Casey. Don't all don't counter Andy's hugs, Commander. That is a shout out. Second shout out, Switzerland to the House of Cards. Kind regards and best wishes from Benjamin. I am guessing House of Cards, a game store in Switzerland. Benjamin wishes you stuff. I don't know what's going on with Casey and the hugs, Commander, but Andy, Andy. I hope this joke made your day. Thank you for the support on Patreon. Thank you for the Jank Week. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.